Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to make some crock pot meals. Our first crock pot meal is chicken tetrazzini. And this is going to basically make the chicken plus the sauce. And then you are to add noodles and pour over noodles and all that. I may add it at the end. Um, just go ahead and stir them in for y'all. We're going to be using some protein pasta. We're going to try to start using protein pasta. I've used it a few times and it actually turns out pretty well. I was a little bit worried that it may not cook the same, but it seems like it's uh, doing well. So we may do that at the end of this. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is take your crock pot insert out, spray it. And we're going to go ahead before we put the chicken breast in and I'm going to get the sauce together first. And um, that way it's good and combined. Before the recipe, you just throw it all in together. And we will, but I just want to uh, make sure this is good and combined first. Okay. You're going to need an envelope of Italian dressing. Just the powder form, not liquid. So... This one's zesty Italian, but I, I do keep a box of this in my pantry because I use it for different recipes. So that's always a good idea. I'm thinking it's, it's less than $5. Okay, you can put minced garlic in this or we can do garlic powder and I'm just gonna do some garlic powder. Uh, a couple of teaspoons. Okay, and I've got a whisk here. I'm gonna whisk this up real quick. It's not gonna be perfect, that's okay. I just want to combine it and it's probably not that great of an idea to put it in here at the bottom of the crock pot but I'm gonna try to keep it stirred maybe if you did it in a separate bowl and that would be you know that would be okay too okay I got some chicken breasts I'm trying to use up get that done I'm gonna just put two chicken breasts in here try to find a smaller one okay wash my hands real quick alrighty now the only thing left to do is a half a stick of butter and throw that in all right so we do have some cream cheese we have to stir in at the end of this but we'll do that at the end after we've cooked everything up so you need to cook this let's see on high for three hours or low for seven all right so let's go ahead and get our other crock pot recipe prepped okay y'all so this is the end of the day and it's time to add what we need to finish this off. This is our tetrazzini. Couldn't say it. I don't know why. You need eight ounces of cream cheese. I went ahead and softened it because it'll just make it easier to stir in. And then I'm going to try to it in and actually that's it it's complete but I'm gonna stick it back in the insert and cook it for another 30 minutes or so so that everything is combined um, but that's it I mean it's ready to go I've already got my pide cooked and what I'm gonna do hold on just a second I'm going to let this warm back up and then I'm gonna come back and um, finish the video as I stir in the noodles. Because instead of serving this over noodles, I'm gonna mix them in. But I wanna do it right before I serve so that it don't soak up everything. So I'm gonna stick this back into the insert, cook it, not really cook it, just warm it up real good on high about 30 minutes or so uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot for 30 minutes but it's probably not gonna take that long because i just need for it to warm back up 
Okay, I'll see you back here in a few. Okay, y'all. So I've warmed this up, combined my my cream cheese, and I've got my penne, and I'm gonna add that in, and I'm just gonna stir it up. Now this was not part of the recipe like this. You were just supposed to serve over the noodles, but I wanted to just combine them. So what I did was I took a 14 ounce box and I took about half out and I cooked it separately. And that's it. And I used the protein pasta. It costs a little bit more, but you don't have to do that. And you can do any shake pasta. If I were you, I would only do rotini, penne, or maybe uh, elbows. That's it. And this is gonna this is gonna last for at least a couple of days because it made a good good amount, a really big amount. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're gonna make an Italian beef. Um, recipe in the crock pot i made this before it's father's day and this is my husband's favorite sandwich so that's what we're doing today i i doubled my recipe somewhat um everything's doubled and i'm gonna add one bouillon cube just to kind of help with the flavoring just a little bit um i do mine just a teeny bit different than other people but it's basically all the same recipe i use two and like i said i'm doubling this two um envelopes of zesty italian zesty italian hopefully y'all can see that i like to use that better because it's a little bit more zip um but if all i could find was the other it's fine one bouillon cube i don't double that part and it's not even in the original recipe i just want to help give it a little bit more flavor two cups of water you're going to need one cup per roast so if you do two roasts you're going to need two cups um i do not use whole peppers we like to have the peppers on um, our sandwiches so we already do it sliced and this is about as much as you need um it's about three quarters of a jar and i'm going to pour everything out of this jar into into this um, you don't have to worry about heat, and I, even though I am using the hot peppers. Hold on a second, I'll show you. It's just about the little tang that it gives it. This is hot. You see right there where it says hot banana pepper rings. Um, this is what I always get. I will use mild if that's all I can find, but for the most part, it's... It's all about the zest and the little bit of kick that it gives. You do not have to do that. You can get the mild ones and the vinegar and stuff off of the peppers is just basically for the tanginess of the beef. I'm gonna cook this about six to eight hours until this roast is falling apart. And I will be back with you this afternoon when everything is cooked. Hey y'all. Okay, so we're at the end of the day. It's time to assemble everything. I got a big loaf of French bread. Cut it off into like threes to make three sandwiches per loaf. So I think the loaf was like 40 something cents. Let's see. The loaf was 45 cents. Right here. So that's three sandwiches per each loaf. Of bread and the loaf of bread was 45 cents so this is two loaves of bread here okay so the first thing we're gonna do is the meat fell apart um, I just left it kind of in the chunks and I mean it's real flimsy and just falling apart so you can just take two forks and kind of pull it apart a little bit more. And then we're going to start assembling these sandwiches. So I just need to find the bottom. And let's see. That's the bottom. And then bottom. 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 Okay. I'm going to have to take these bigger ones off. So we'll just assemble the sandwiches. And the peppers have kind of disintegrated, which they usually do by the end of the day, but they're still in there. 
And I just mix it all together. I don't worry about, um, oops. I don't worry about not having pepper fat, you know, they, it cooked in the juice, so you're gonna have that, that taste throughout. It doesn't matter. And the peppers do kind of lose a little bit of their heat, but they keep the tanginess part. The more of the vinegar taste. And then this has also got some of the juice in it as well. And so, just gonna. My husband likes this, so I usually do two roasts at a time because they want leftovers. So. And then you can kind of, like I said, shred it some more. Make sure that you have enough to go. And so I have my crock pot here beside the stove. And I just use a slotted spoon and get some of the meat out, the juices out, the, you know, the peppers, the whole thing. And you can all, you can put sauce or, you know, anything that you choose to on it. But we're going to put this back in the oven and I've already got the broiler ready because I went ahead and toasted the bread first under the low broiler just a little bit because my husband likes it toasted so Thing, making sure everything's ready. Now, you can also dip back into the juices and everything. And usually, I just let them do that after. So now I'm starting to put pepper jack cheese on. I'm going to do two slices per sandwich at least on these smaller ones. And um, we do pepper jack, you can do provolone, you can do Swiss, you can just do whatever, you can even do white cheddar if that's what you want. But I try to do pepper jack on these. And you're just gonna lay it over the meat. And then we're gonna stick it, make sure that y'all can see. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna stick it back under the broiler um, so that um, and the cheese can melt. My cheese was giving me a hard time. 24 pack of pepper jack slices is what I got. That's usually plenty. Just depends on how big you're gonna go. Okay, so let me stick this in the oven and melt that and then let me get everything plated up. Be right back. Okay, y'all, so this is the finished product. I did take the top half of the bun, or the top half of the bread, and I put a little bit of the, the juice out of the pan on it. And next, I'm gonna put some of this on it. You don't have to. You can use horseradish, you can use mayo, or nothing, or ranch. Um, but I'm gonna put some of this on here. Just to kind of keep it from being just too dry um yeah the meat and the juice and everything help but um the bread it's just a lot of bread and that's it a little french onion i'm sorry italian beef french onion sandwich and here's my chips i've just put some kettle chips with it okay Real easy, quick dinner, crock pot does all the work. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.